The diagram below represents a printed poster. Rectangle A, B, C, D is, part, is the part on which the text is printed. Um, so this is where you would say stuff like, Hey, babe, hope you're well. Um, XOXO, PS, I'm hungry. <laughs> Um, okay, so the diagram below um, represents a printed poster. Rectangle ABCD is the part in which the text is printed. This shaded area, this shaded area is 432 square meters. Okay, Kev, get your nonsense off here, my bro. Let's be serious now. So this is 432 square meters. And AD is X centimeters. AD is X, okay? Well, that would mean this is also X because it's a rectangle. And A, B, C, D is four centimeters from the left and right. We can see that, we can see that, we can see that, we can see that. Okay. Show that the total area of the page. Do they mean the whole page? Um, I think they mean the whole page, right? Huh? Okay. So that means that this length would be X plus eight. Why not X plus four? Well, it's X, and then you've got four and four, so that's eight. And then this length, wait, why are they getting such nonsense over here? Okay, well, let's see how this goes, guys. This, wait, the diagram below, okay. Um, the di Okay, so yeah, so this would be, this length would be, oh, we don't know what this length is. Okay, so let's call this Y for now. Just call it Y. So, we know that x multiplied by y is 432 because that is what area is. So we can then say that y is 432 over x. <laughs> so we can put this then as 432 over x. 432 over x. Okay, so this length would then be 432 over x plus 3 plus three, so that's gonna be plus six. So if you then wanted to get the area of this entire thing, it would be length times height, or whatever you wanna call it. So the area, or let's call it A with an X, would then be X plus eight, multiply six. Okay, now we're just gonna go multiply out. So you're gonna multiply these two together, that'll just give you 432. Then you're gonna multiply these two together, which would give you six X. Then you're going to multiply these two together, which would give you 3, 4, 5, 6 over x. And then you're going to multiply these two together, which would give you 48. Then you can put the 48 and the 432 together, which would give you 480. And then we've got exactly what they wanted over here. You don't have to have it written out exactly in their order. Now it says, determine the value of x so that the total area is a minimum. Whether they say minimum or maximum, makes no difference. You're gonna go do what we normally do. So how do we find the minimum or maximum of anything? I want you to know this off by heart. You take the first derivative, make it equal to zero, that's it. So what do we wanna find the mi maximum or minimum of? The area, so we need a formula for area. Guess what, we already have one. So we're gonna go say a of x is equal to, now we're gonna make this look better. So we're gonna bring the x up to the top, like that, and then the rest is all fine. Okay, take the first derivative now. And so that's gonna be, you take this minus one and you multiply it in the front, so it becomes minus two. Then six x just becomes six, and then this would fall away. Now, to find the minimum or maximum, you make the first derivative equal to zero, like that. And now we're just gonna solve. So I'm gonna take the three, four, five x, I mean the three, four, five, six. Um, I'm gonna put the x minus two back down at the bottom like that, so I just took this over to the left. I'm then gonna multiply the x squared up to the top. I'm then gonna divide both sides by six, and then I'm just gonna take the square root now to get x alone. Oh, and it works out beautiful, mate. I get uh, 24 uh, centimeters, and it just said determine the value of x, so we don't need to go sub in any further.